the evening session at Reynolds Coliseum just about to get underway. A familiar face in the villains, but the Knights trying to crash what has been a perfect run. When Bishop McGinnis gets here in the title environment, we will see what gives our broadcast presented by myspot.nc.gov. 400-plus teams on both the men's and women's side. They start playing basketball when the year begins, but only 16 have remained standing today. And for these two, there's only room for one, one a title. So often, Anna Witte, it comes down to players, and we've got some good ones again. Guard a late... Adelaide Jernigan averaging 18 points. She's unselfish and really focused on the team. It really shows with her 46 assists so far this season. Watch for her to drive with the ball into the paint, but also find pockets in Chatham Charter's defense. On the other side of the floor, point guard Tamaya Walden averaging 23 points a game. She's really quick and can shoot all over the field. In the playoffs, she's really stepped up with the rebound. So watch for Walden to crash the boards even more. Those are West Shore home players to watch, bringing happiness to every home. That's West Shore home. Without further ado, we'll go ahead and roll right into the Ingles food for thought, which are your keys to this game. What do you see it coming down to? The villains have to attack the night zone here today. Head coach Brian Robert Robinson said they have a great zone. So the short corner and the middle zone are the best spots to shoot if you're the villains. On the other side of the floor, the biggest key is winning the rebounding battle on both sides of the floor. This Knights team's averaging just under 35 rebounds. We know we can do it in a championship game. It certainly sets you apart. One last opportunity to catch your breath before the villains and Knights battle it out for the title next. Ten times Bishop McGinnis has been in the state championship environment. Ten times they have carried a state championship trophy home for the champs. Pretty much everybody back, Anna, as we take a look at the starting lineup for Bishop McGinnis. A big key for those returners is senior Charlie Chapel. She has done a phenomenal job being a facilitator for Jordan. Jernigan here this season, 81 assists, the most on the team. She's shooting 43% from the field. So watch for how Ch Chapel does and executes on the offensive side of the floor here tonight. As we flip over to the myspot.nc.gov starting lineups for their opponent, who else do you highlight right now on the Knights side of things? Mia Brooks is a fantastic forward for this Knights team. She has 107 offensive rebounds. Rebounding was huge for Coach Robinson, so watch for Mia Brooks to lead her team, especially on the offensive side of the floor here tonight. Well, we talked about it. You got a 10-time champ on one side, and you got a team with four straight winning seasons trying to ride some senior leadership forward into a um, tremendous, tremendous night and memorable memorable moment and there he is you think about the the situation that has been created and the juggernaut that has been built there at bishop mcginnis bishop mcginnis like you said 10 championships a ton of returners on this team and it just means experience is going to be better and help them out here tonight well, we have tipped we are underway bishop mcginnis hot out of the gate and a first shot that will not go down Tried the three right away. This is lost out, and it'll go the other direction. So a chance for the Knights to draw the first points of the contest here. As Bishop McGinnis comes up empty on that opening possession. You know, when you're defending the title, you want to try to put pressure on right away. They're doing that defensively, and here's a quick takeaway. Up the floor, right in the heart of things. Won't quite fall that time around for Katie Dill. Well, what a factor she was in the title game the last time around for this crew. You mentioned Chapel. Of course, those the, the twins now in their senior seasons. So much upper-class leadership for this Bishop McGinnis squad. Going down the right side of the lane. That tossed up. Won't fall for Tamaya Walden. But the second glance is true. How about this? Mia Brooks. Well done by Brooks to come up with that offensive rebound, and that's what facilitated that second opportunity by the Knights. Watch for that to be continuous as this game goes on. Delana Laughlin looks ahead, but that's just out of the reach of Lillian Jones. Down the floor again, Bishop McGinnis 
laid home by Jernigan. Well, it didn't take long. You highlighted her in the open, and there's her first moment of the state title environment. Jernigan, you can see her athleticism and how smart she is to get down the floor and find those opportunities for herself. So a bucket on the board for both these teams. Haven't seen that yet here at Reynolds Coliseum. Both teams getting a bucket fairly quickly. We're going to have a tie-up. Possession arrow is going to keep it on this end of the floor. But uh, the first two championship games today, one team ran out in front of the other, and it, it took a while for one of our schools to get their sea legs underneath them. Not the case for these two. A really good matchup, and you like to see both teams get an opportunity to get points on the board early. Watches that physicality by the Knights, allowed for that opportunity for Brooks to put that one away. Oh, you talk about points on the board early. Brooks has them. Take a look at this. Watches Brooks. She keeps the ball away from her defender, faces up in the last second that doesn't allow her defender to take away the ball, and she draws the foul as well. She has a couple of buckets, and with the and one coming, we visit the NC529 free throw line for the first time. Never too early, never too late to start saving for education. That's NC 529 and the free throw off the mark. So hold steady at four points on Brooks, but she's the first with multiple buckets on either side. And it is a 4 2 lead for the Knights. Three ball, true. There's our initial West Shore home three pointer. West Shore home bringing happiness to every home. Jernigan within, Jernigan without. She can score from anywhere. Jernigan. From the three-point line with hands inside her face, that is going to be a player that this Knights team has to cover carefully here tonight, no matter where she is on the floor. Well, that's gathered out of there by Chapel looking forward. And able to gather that up. Jernigan again tried it inside. Was not to be. And another tie-up. A couple of those early. And as was the case on the other end of the floor, well, that alternating possession arrow is going to keep it right here. Great job by Jernigan to see that transition moment. She puts her hand up, calls for it. And how casual she is with the ball in her hand. She keeps the ball away from her defender, but she's so silky smooth to get a little bit closer to the hoop, look for an opportunity, and have a teammate come down with it. The standard in the 1A ranks and all that senior leadership. And on the other side, young talent. They collide here in the title game and through the heart of the lane drawing contact is Tate Chapel. Tate Chapel wearing jersey number 12, Charlie Chapel wearing jersey number 3. Referenced it earlier, they are as you can see twins and they are quite a force for the villains of Bishop McGinnis. Tate Chapel an app state commit. She is the certainly a fantastic shooter on this court. 42% from the field. The way that not only she could, can get down the field and facilitate opportunities with Jernigan, but she can also put ones up herself. This this Knights team has a really, or rather this Villains team has a lot of shooters on the floor. Yeah, they're going to love what they get in Boone, North Carolina in the days ahead when you consider what she's done in her high school career. A little push and a foul up top. And we had had just the one whistle on each side prior to this latest one. It's going to be against Chapel, and we got to be specific each time, right? Take Chapel, whistled for the foul there, works her way off on the far side, and the inbound coming for the Knights. Deep pass, well executed as it is laid home by Mia Brooks. What a start for Mia Brooks, but you got to credit that as much to Lillian Jones head up toss inbounds. Brooks with all the points on the floor right now for the Knights. They see that she's ready in a great transition steal. May change here. Walden, although it's slotted away. Katie Deal quickly back to defend when it looked like it was going to be a sure bucket for Tamaya Walden. The Knights reading that so well. There was no way that Deal had any idea that the Knights were coming up behind her, but she gets back in transition. That's a really good defensive play by Bishop to win the ball. Back in. Brooks won't go. Second chance will. Nice work on the cleanup duty. And this is the start you wanted if you're the Knights trying to hang with the 10 time champs. Down to the corner. Wide open look. Got to take that. Particularly when you can knock it down the way Isabella Ross just did. 
Isabella Ross with our three-point basket quickly on the other end of the floor. These teams trade them now. You know, we've talked a lot on this Saturday about nerves and the changes in the building and wading your way into the state championship environment. Uh-uh, not with these two. They are ready to go and in a rhythm. Driving to the bucket, the length of the floor. And you will see the celebration for Bishop McGinnis as they were able to draw the charge. You mentioned the fact that both teams are playing well right now. And watch as Brooks, as she gets down, really well done for Varner to set her feet and draw that foul. But both sides look like they've been here before. They're playing like they've been here before. The communication is key all over the floor. You see players talking to one another, being calm, being composed. And that's why we're seeing so many points being scored early on in the first quarter. Well, and you knew you'd get that from Bishop McGinnis, right? But uh, did you know you would get that from this night squad? They have been impressive the way they have come out of the gate here. We're going to get another foul call up top. I'll go back to that charge that was taken by Kirsten Varner. Looked like she had done that before. Well, it's a solid start. The first 20 are split evenly in the 1A women's title game. Well, he's put some pretty good teams on this floor, has he not? Coach Moore will be busy tomorrow. Selection Sunday is on the horizon, but uh, he's looking for that next group to continue what is one of the great programs in all of college basketball here at Valvano Arena, KEL Court, Reynolds Coliseum. Among the best, among the standards in college basketball, this Wolfpack program, Anna. To the corner, rims off. Back out top, the standard in 1A of late. Bishop McGinnis looking for a basket that will not fall. But boy, they just stay relentless defensively. Jernigan tried to punch that away. And on the other end, it is last touched by the villains, so it stays with the Knights. But you think about all the history in this building, okay? And, and, and seeing Coach Moore invoke so much of that, you look down at, at Kay Yao's name. We talked about early butterflies. I thought there was a great quote in the press conference invoking the name of Kay Yao. They said, you're going to have butterflies when you're playing in big games. Coach Yao said, you just hope they're flying in formation. And they certainly seem like they've been for these two teams thus far. Bishop has looked so locked in with how they're executing these passes. Watch as they know exactly where they need to be, the spots they need to be in to execute. We spoke about being in the right corners, the right spots, and they're really picking apart this night team. They just need those shots to drop. Steady at 10 apiece, and we have been for a while now. As uh, buckets were not hard to come by initially, but suddenly both teams finding it hard to find a lane to the basket. And that's lost right into that Bishop McGinnis bench, but uh, it'll remain right here. Just under three to play. What a first quarter already. What we've seen, too, is both teams kind of breaking each other down tactically. They know what spots they want to be in. You can tell both teams have watched a lot of film on one another, and it looks like a really two good teams well matched up when it comes up to the tactical part. Yeah, and two amazing coaching staffs to have them back prepared. This is Drain. May surprise you to know 25% from the field to begin things for Bishop McGinnis, 50% on the other side plus now as that raises the average to 54. This may raise Bishop McGinnis shooting average. Not on this trip though. And here come the Knights one more time with the lead and the basketball. A little work around. Could go through the legs as Bishop McGinnis comes away with it. Jernigan. And just a relentless pursuit of the bucket. Guess what? We are tied again, and Jernigan remains in the thick of it all. Drive toward the baseline. And that is pulled out of the sky. A rebound by Isabella Ross. Jernigan finds another gear. But the defensive board to the Knights, in this case, Emerson Clark. Under 90 to play in the opening period, and it will be Bishop McGinnis basketball. Substitution coming in. Guess who's coming back? Katie Dill, the senior center, into the contest, and Grace Harriman will give way. Another of the seniors taking a seat. 
122 remaining. Fairly cleanly played first period. There's five combined fouls for the two teams. And an evenly played first period. Jernigan. Nice touch off the glass. Jernigan is so athletic and so long. Her ability to put those balls up with ease because her hand is so close to the hoop. And watch how she knows exactly what spot she needs to be in. Her teammate feeds her the ball at the exact right time. And that's what's making this Bishop offense click. Well, that was close for Walden to pushing that back. And she stays with it. And it will end up on this end of the floor for the Knights. With 50 seconds remaining in the period. Timeout called. One thing is for sure, they may not carry the lead into the second period, but the Knights have certainly served notice that they are in no way intimidated by the 10-time champs. They are right in this thing as we come across the final minute of the period. Bishop will bring the ball down the floor and score, and it will not affect the Knights. They will bring in transition just as, as, as athletically, bring it down, put up some points. Right now, the game is so tight, obviously, just two points between the two teams, and the Knights are not backing down at all. They look like they've been here before against a team who's been here 10 times. Well, guess what? First appearance. First right. ever appearance for this crew. You know that's not the case when you look at uh, Coach Brian Robinson on the Bishop McGinnis side of things, but he's facing a young team that has already embraced the moment. And you know, Coach Patterson said about this team, long, hard journey, but an enjoyable journey. And he said the chemistry of this team giving the confidence to this group that they're going to be able to com compete with anybody, anywhere, anytime. I think that notice has been served. Coach Patterson spoke about this team coming into the game and saying, we've never been here before, but he referenced the Hoosiers movie saying when the coach went into the arena, he brought a measuring tape, he measured the goal, he measured the floor, and said, look, it's the same number. There's just a few more people here watching us. I just loved what he had to say about uh, the opportunity. He said, you know, the moment doesn't need to be too big for you. You just have to look forward to competing. His team has done just that. They have competed well in this first period. Separated from the reigning champions by a basket. Ball in the hands of Bishop McGinnis. It looks like they're going to hold it for the final shot. Unless there's a wide open look. Here's one. And that's a three. A West Shore home three. West Shore home bringing happiness to every home. As it's good. Not far ahead of the horn. And it takes what was a tie game for the majority of this first period. Makes it a five point Bishop McGinnis advantage through one. Quick glance at the United States Army stats from the first period. U.S. Army, be all that you can be. Check them out at GoArmy.com. How about statistically thus far? Both teams are matched up well. The biggest thing that sticks out to me is the assist. Bishop is leading an assist. It shows how well and unselfish they are at sharing the ball. Also take a look at the points in the paint. Plus four advantage as we get to our Riddle and Brantley points in the paint. When justice counts, call Riddle and Brantley. Interior points, the theme of the moment. There's a bucket on the inside. And Dill has run it now to 1912. Here's the first real breathing room we've seen on either side, Anna. Not for long, though, right? That's the biggest key in this game right now is how one team scores and the other team just takes it down the end of the floor and does the same exact thing. They're picking each part one another's defensive zones really well. The offense looks good, but both sides seem to sure up their defense a little bit better. Communication would be key in that. Back-to-back -back buckets by deal as these teams continue to trade points. Great ball inside. It allows for Clark to find that open pass. And then again, another basket underneath for Bishop. They're finding, both teams are finding their opportunities so close to the basket. The defense just needs to be a little bit closer to their man. Dill missed her first two shots. She has made her last two really heating up here in the early stages of the second period. And after that throw in, it's going to be a jump ball, tie up, and it will be possession arrow with Bishop McGinnis. So we walk you through the first period stats and wade into a second quarter in which the lead is seven for Bishop McGinnis with the basketball. You know, we talked about the way the, the Knights hung around in that first period and certainly expect them to do that throughout the course of this one. High praise coming from Coach Robinson when he talked about this group 
He said in their playoff runs, he had scouted teams that were playing against this crowd. Really developed respect for them when they were freshmen. He said, I saw them compete against one of our opponents' homes. And then when they were sophomores, it was either us or them getting into that limited playoff year. Because you'll remember the playoffs were limited because of some of the pandemic shutdowns. And he said, you know, it came down to a spot between us and them. He said, so this is a team, this Knights team, that had been on his radar for a while. And now here they are battling it out with his team for the title. No better opportunity to play against a team like the Knights in a state championship game. You can see the composure from Bishop. They're reading the Knights well, but also on the other side, they've done a really good job with Jeff Patterson setting his team up well. The defense looks strong. The attack looks strong. But just a few points behind can get him back in this game. Well, the initial of the Hardy's free throws dropped right through by Kirsten Varner and the junior hits them both so Varner her first two points of the contest and the lead just like that continuing to grow and another possession coming for Bishop McGinnis this is where you have to be careful though if you're the Knights for all the praise we've laid out there that they have stayed right on the hills of Bishop McGinnis these are the type of runs that the villains so often use to pull away coach Robinson spoke about this Knights team as well saying their defensive zone is very strong so we have to be locked in to break that apart you can see little by little they've been able to do that but it's the length and the longevity of the game that they have to continue to do because the Knights have shored up their defense well to get to the state championship game. Another chance at the Hardy's free throw line coming. And as Bishop McGinnis will see take Chapel knock this down. Chapel, who you will remember picked up those couple of early fouls. In fact, she's the only player that has been whistled for a foul yet on the Bishop McGinnis side of things. Just a couple whistles against the villains thus far. And she's able to do some solid work at the Hardy's free throw line. Jones tosses that to Clark. Good ball movement down to the corner. Six and a half to play in the opening half of action. Taken away one more time. That was Charlie Chapel. Her twin feeds this inside. Jernigan couldn't finish it. Boy, the timing for Brooks to get there and disrupt what looked like it might be an open three. Snuff that possession out. That is going to be offensive. Well, not that the player control area is in effect here in the high school ranks but it's a pretty good indicator for our officials and you see how well this is taken watch as charlie chapel keeps her feet on the floor a great charge by bishop and you can tell that's something that they practice a lot this season we've already seen it twice in this game so the knights have to be careful once they get so close to bishop and close to the hoop bishop mcginnis the count had started and that pesky defense resulting in a foul call here. Looks as if that's going to be on the Knights. Delana Lofton. And Laughlin talked about the, the few whistles on Bishop McGinnis so far. Seven whistles already. Or seven fouls assessed going the other way. And Bishop McGinnis had to make sure everybody was aware. Hey, wait a minute. We've earned that one and one opportunity. So here's the first of the one and one chances. Let's see if the front end can be knocked down by Charlie Chapel. Again, 17 foul. A couple on Clark, a couple on Brooks if you're tracking any individual issues. Unable to connect on the front end of the one and one. Haven't mentioned our officials yet. When we get a chance, we'll pass their info along. There's a whistle. Probably a good chance to do it. A couple of shots coming. Eddie Taylor, Carter Pounders, and Samantha Wynn Galloway. Those responsible for handling things. And we don't talk about it a lot, but it's worth noting. And what better time to do it than with somebody at the charity stripe. It's an honor to work these games for these officials. They've been graded across the course of the season. And when you've called games all over the state and they ask you to be a part of a state championship crew, that's an honor well deserved. A great opportunity to referee games at Reynolds Coliseum as well. And I will have to say, really well ref games. Not one call have I seen not be called that I think should have been called 
so far today. This is our second game, so. Absolutely. Well done on all parts. A little back and forth here as the lead has been right around the double-digit mark for a while now. 25-14 for Bishop McGinnis. Bucket needed for the Knights. That may be one. And coming from out of bounds to try and preserve that, but it was to no avail as it will be Villains basketball. Subbing in for Bishop McGinnis is Isabella Ross. And a chance to catch her breath coming for Katie Deal. For such a force inside. We'll see if the Knights can do much with Deal's presence missing the six-footer taking a seat. Bodies to the floor, but the play continues. Charlie Chapel. She has to find some type of gap in the heart of that defense, does she not? And still able to get the shot up. And she's uh, conversing with one of our officials down there. Just talking about uh, what happened, I think, on the sequence prior to her shot when she went down to the floor a moment ago. Chapel so good at getting inside. She has the size to kind of sneak her way in there as well. Just a little too far away from the net. But if you look at the stats right now and how Bishop has been able to force Chatham so many turnovers, four turnovers, rather 10 turnovers, now 11 turnovers in this game, the Knights have given it to Bishop. Bishop's done a really good job on the defensive side of the floor to kind of sure up and not allow the Knights to be so aggressive. Yeah, those numbers are climbing quick, aren't they, when you talk about those turnover numbers. Almost had a backcourt violation on that last possession. It ended up being a, a fruitless possession after all. And as we dip inside, a four and a half remaining in the second period. Will the 11 point lead grow? Bishop knew that coming into this game, Tamaya Walden would be a huge key for the Knights. And right now, she has four turnovers, the most on this Knights team. So Walden has to take care of the ball just a little bit better, find open teammates just like that, and allow me a bunch to score. A Varner layup on one end of the floor. A Mia Brooks answer on the other end. And we're back in that rhythm of trading baskets between these teams with 3.40 and ticking downward to go in the second. Well, what a job to get that shot up. Did not find pay dirt. And then a little short on this shot is Jernigan. Boy, the value of a late second period run for the Knights. Will they be able to come up with one? Trailing at 27 16 mid second. Well, not far away from the United Health Center's halftime report, a special interview with Commissioner Tucker of the North Carolina High School Athletic Association. First half highlights, we'll have stat updates, all that and more. And it is all a part of the United Health Centers Building Healthier Communities Halftime Report. And the inbound there. You've been impressed with the play so far of Mia Brooks. Mia Brooks, eight points, four rebounds. She has to be a little careful, though, because she does have two fouls. I like her partnership with Tamaya Walden, how they've been able to convert some of these points. Mia has been the go-to, and I think that's who the Knights should continue to go for because she's so strong and dominant, able to put them up inside the paint. Has four rebounds alongside those eight points. These points are going to come from the interior, and they belong to Isabella Ross. Ross has quietly already put together a seven-point effort in this first half. A floater that won't go. Looking out front. Jernigan stays under control and handles the layup. That's the latest of our North Carolina Department of Public Safety fast breaks. The North Carolina Department of Public Safety reminding you that uh, you can be a champion as well, and that was a championship-type run right there. When you consider how many times this villain's team has been in a moment like this, they are cool, calm, and collected. 
you can see the partnership between Varner and Jernigan. They've made that pass many times, and it's in transition that Varner had the whereabouts to pick her eyes up and see Jernigan in transition. The way that Jernigan has so easily been able to put those balls up into the hoop makes this Villains team really hard to dominate on the defensive side of the floor. Well, you're talking about individual players who have had standout performances already. We will pick the myspot.nc.gov player of the game before all is said and done here. And plenty of good candidates already in effect for that one. Look at him, coaching them up as if it's the first time here. And we talked about 10 and 0 in the state championship environment. I thought he had one of the great quotes, Brian Robinson, when talking about handling the moment. He said, pressure is alleviated by preparation. If you know you're prepared and you understand what your responsibility is in the moment, that's the best preparation to handle the pressure of a state championship environment. When a guy's won, uh, or when a team's won 10 titles and a guy's had the kind of success he's had, you listen when he makes statements as such. Practice is key, but also having the ability to have been here before and have, have the players on the floor that have the experience. And that will, is what we've seen from Bishop. They've returned all of their players this season. And you can see that and how silky smooth they are on offense. Well, speaking of silky smooth, here is a three ball from Isabella Ross. Ross is in double figures in this contest as she knocks down the West Shore home three. Ten points, four of six from the field, and a perfect two of two from the three point from beyond the three point line. But guess what? Brooks has an answer on the other end. The lead at 14 with 98 seconds remaining in the half. That's a wide open look for another West Shore home three. Won't rattle down. Firing that up. To no avail. Jernigan eyes up the floor. She'll fire away. Big time offensive rebound inside, and as Kirsten Varner tried to take it back up, she drew the foul. Jernigan all by herself as she brings that ball up the floor. That's when a Knights player has to step in and get contact on her, put a hand on her, let her know that someone's on her because she was so casual. She was able to pick her eyes up. She was able to find the next best player. The Knights just have to close down a little bit faster, not play man-to-man -man, because the zone works for the Knights, but just put the pressure on a player who scored 11 points so far. First one goes for Varner into the contest for Bishop McGinnis is Claire Sullivan, one of the freshmen, seeing some time in the latter stages of this first half. And the Hardys free throw just off the mark. But possession stays with Bishop McGinnis. The lead, 15, and in a position to grow further. Boy, that would really stretch it out. It will. A West Shore home three. West Shore home, America's most admired home remodeling brand and the most admired team in the Class A ranks on the girls' side wowing the fans at Reynolds with a major lead in effect heading across the final minute of the first half. Much better ball movement from the Knights on the opposite side of the floor. They were able to pick apart Bishop. Jernigan couldn't get stuck in. She moved her feet a little too much, so she couldn't defend well and allow the Knights to get to the free throw line, and that's where they need to be right now to get back in this game, get the confidence with a few more points on the board. Elena Laughlin drops the first of the Hardys free throws through. Home of the made-from-scratch biscuits, the charbroiled black Angus beef thick burgers. That's Hardee's. They remind you to feed your happy. Hardee's the sponsors of our free throws in this second quarter. And she is good for both of them. Nicely done at the charity stripe for Laughlin. Now to take a little bit of a chunk out of what was an 18-point lead. But needing more toward the closing stages of this half. And you talk about ball movement. Bishop McGinn is putting on a clinic right now. Sullivan. Playing catch with Ross. And driving to a window in which to shoot was Charlie Chappell, but it was off the mark. With no shot clock, I thought they might pass the ball all the way around to the end of the second quarter. It's looking that way. A shot taken by the Knights. 
three seconds to work with. Let's see if they get something off here. A heave before the buzzer that is high off the backboard, and it will be a 38-22 halftime score. What a first half. Well done by Bishop to take advantage of the opportunities on the offensive side of the floor. Picking apart this Knights zone defense What is what Robinson wanted to do, and they excelled well. What Chatham needs to do to get back in this game is take advantage of those opportunities on the offensive flat side of the floor and really break down Bishop's defense a little bit better. All right, halftime report on the other side of the break. You're watching the United Health Center's Halftime Report. High quality health care regardless of insurance status. How's it going, everybody? I'm Nelson Weston. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the state championship high school basketball games. Who better to join us than our longstanding good friend from Ingalls Markets, Melissa Nuttall. Oh, Melissa, always a pleasure to see oh, you, my I'm friend. I'm so happy to be here with you. It's championship day. It's championship day indeed. Mm -hmm. And speaking of which, now, now Ingalls Market, y'all provide a robust community support, not just for right now, but also for a long, long time now. What inspires y'all to want to frequently get back to high school athletics? Well, this is our community, and mm -hmm. these students are our children and the children of our shoppers. And we do this in a community sense for everything. So we, we live, work, and shop in these same communities where our stores are. So we're really enriching our whole community by being part of all the things that matter to the families that shop with us. That is terrific work indeed. Speaking of the community and the students, you guys are also famous for y'all's remarkable Tools for Schools program. What is that program all about? And furthermore, how can the good folks at home get started with it today? Well, the program is designed to help teachers, classrooms, students and principals mm -hmm. get school supplies in the classroom to the students and not have to per take that money out of their own pocket and bring those to the school. Easy as pie to get in, go get your Ingalls Advantage card, link it to the school of your choice every time you shop you're helping that school speaking of pie you know i'm getting hungry as we speak today is game day what are some of those delicious food items we can pick up from the ingles deli today all right well first roll in and get your fuel so you're on your way to the to the to the game and then get a sub and some fried chicken eat on your way mm, sounds delicious mm -hmm. indeed always a pleasure to Thank see you my you. friend all right folks time to get back to the game we'll see you soon you're watching the united health center's halftime report high quality health care regardless of insurance status Here with North Carolina High School Athletic Association Commissioner Q Tucker. Commissioner Tucker, state championship weekend is always exciting. Yes, it is a big week for us. Uh, it's one of those weeks we look forward to every year about this time. And uh, it's hard to believe that we are uh, sitting on the edge of uh, crowning state champions. What goes into the preparation for such a large state championship? The closer we get to seeing who the actual participants are, then we start to look at the times and uh, start to look at ticket allocations and how all of that works, especially now that we're into this age of digital ticketing, uh, just making sure that all the schools know how to inform their participants, et cetera. We've seen headlines this year indicating numerous behavior issues across the state. How have you addressed those concerns? I don't anticipate that we'll see that this weekend because this is really, this is like the cherry on top of the basketball season. And so everyone really should be about playing at their best level. And then what we want the spectators to do, because that seems to be where the issues have arisen this year, spectators feeling as though that ticket I bought gives me the right to just do do the thing I want to in the stands or in the bleachers or say whatever I want to. So. We'll have messages that uh, announcements that will be made on Saturday uh, to try to address some of that and hopefully stem that kind of behavior that could occur. What are the ongoing challenges facing the association? Jane, we still deal with this whole issue of declining numbers in officiating. Uh, we had a committee last summer who studied the situation here in North Carolina, and one of the things that came out of the board meeting was to give a pay increase across the board to all officials. So as we address that, we're trying to do creative things. One of the things that we do is that any new uh, official who says, hey, I want to I wanna join the officiating ranks, then we waive some of those registration fees. Uh, we're looking at trying to come up with an opportunity for our officials to perhaps get some grant monies to be able to help, uh, let's say, in terms of educational development. We try to address health and safety, uh, mental health issues, 
All of those are on the table. So uh, we have just a myriad of, of opportunities, I'll say, to make a difference in the lives of all of the students who participate in our program. And uh, we think education-based athletics is still the, the best thing going. It's the best dropout prevention program there is. And uh, we just continue to dig our heels in and try to do everything we can. We appreciate your time, Commissioner Tucker, and thank you for everything you do for high school sports. Well, we're getting set for a little more action in the 1A title contest. What a day it has been at Reynolds already. And boy, you glance back at what we saw in that first half, and you know what you're going to see in these clips as we review the major moments from the first two periods of action. Bishop has done a really good job of closing down and really finding opportunities to beat the Knights defense, but it's really been big on Mia Brooks and her opportunities. She's six of eight from the field. And then you look on the other side of the court, Adelaide Jernigan, six of 15, how good she is in transition. She finds moments and opportunities just to put the ball up and she makes it look so easy. But the way that Bishop's been able to share the ball across the floor, they're never in any rush and they find the perfect opportunity to score. And that's been the biggest thing was breaking down this night's defense and they've done just that early on in this game. Uh, and you take a look at what happened in that second period alone. That's where the separation was created to build this 38-22 lead. And the numbers bear out the way things are trending. Bishop McGinnis, as we look at the U.S. Army stats. The Knights just have to take care of the ball a little bit better. 11 turnovers in the first half. You can't have that number. Bishop with only four turnovers. But also, the way that Bishop has been able to capitalize on the three-pointers, 5 of 12, Chatham hasn't taken advantage of that either. So it'll be interesting to see how Chatham kind of does some things differently on the offensive side of the floor. Maybe a little bit more energy, and Bishop, just continue to do what you're doing. Those stats brought to you by the U.S. Army. Be all that you can be. Check them out at GoArmy.com. We are closing in on the third period of action. We'll check on a couple more stats and have basketball for you when you return to Reynolds. Thirty-eight points on the board for Bishop McGinnis, and they stretched out a lead down the stretch in that second period. Just about ready for the third quarter of action, but we've got one more number to check for you, and it is our Riddle and Brantley points in the paint number. Surprisingly enough, these teams have been pretty even in the interior. Bishop is getting their opportunities all over the floor, but they've been really excellent in the paint because of Adelaide Jernigan and then on the other side of the floor with Mia Brooks having an excellent game. She's so good underneath because of her physicality. But if you're Chatham Charter, you need to kick the ball out a little bit more, get some higher percentage shots to catch up with this Bishop team. When justice counts, Paul Riddle and Brantley, they're the provider of our points in the paint. Hey, third quarter happening here at Reynolds. We will see if the Knights can close the gap in this third period. If you're talking adjustments and you could eavesdrop in that Knights locker room, what do you think the points of emphasis were coming into this one? One of the biggest points of emphasis for Chatham Charter is killing the turnovers, taking care of the ball a little bit better, ensuring up their defense. That's something the Knights have always done really well, is play really good, solid zone defense. But today, Bishop's been able to pick that apart. Also, you gotta zero in on Jernigan. You can't allow her to have 14 points in the first half. You have to make sure whenever she touches the ball, there's someone defending her. Easier said than done when you talk about a highly decorated player who Absolutely. got the honors out of this game a year ago, and she's back again making her mark. Can't get the basketball to her immediately here, but ultimately, Katie Deal will toss it Jernigan's direction. Katie Deal, such a force on the inside because of her length. Back out there on the floor to start the third quarter. Zips a pass. Garner going to dribble close to the basket, and she'll be shooting a couple. And this foul appears as if it's going to go on Emerson Clark. You, know, you talk about that defense for Chatham Charter. They only allowed 18 points to River Mill. They only allowed 25 points to Pamlico County. They only allowed 27 points to Vance Charter. And you're talking about some playoff environments in that latter stretch and teams that qualified for the state playoffs. So, you know, this is a team that can have that smothering defense, but they've ran across a 10-time champ that when they are in rhythm, 
They've been hard for anybody in any classification. The biggest variable against the Knights is the 10-time champion in Bishop. The Knights went 10-0 in conference play this season, a very good team, but it's the next level you have to take against this Bishop team who's been here. They've excelled here at the state championship, and for the Knights, it's their first time. Trying to chase this down. Boy, that went through the wickets and she found a way to keep it alive. And now is going to fire away on the three from the corner. What a completion of that sequence it would have been for Jernigan. But it just rims off. One of the more unusual saves you'll ever see, but she pulled it off. Whatever it takes. That blocked. Second effort, no good. And here come the Knights. Well, there's the stop. That's step A. Can the Knights now turn that defensive impact into points? Well, that almost worked its way back for Brooks. Jernigan, hard to the hoop. And she has points. Jernigan just uh, Sometimes difficult players... to stop, yeah. Sometimes there's players that you can't really contain. Yes. They're going to score, and they're going to have their opportunities and put it away. But you have to be able to affect the game and have players there. And sometimes they leave you speechless. When you describe it so many different ways, you look at Jernigan and you go, what do you say about this? Well, let's just show it to you again. Here is the fast break point brought to you by Department of Public Safety in North Carolina. Jernigan and her ability just to have two players on her and continue with ease to put that ball up so easily. You can tell that the Knights are aware of Jernigan. They don't want to play too hard against her because they don't want to foul, but it's that fine line of really closing her space as well. Mia Brooks on the other end, making it a fruitful trip for the Knights. And here comes another for the crew out of the East. Jeffrey Patterson's Knights at a Central Tar Hill 1A, 2A. The East representative up the floor. Boy, that's going to require Lillian Jones to really accelerate. She does. Keeps the possession alive. Here's a West Shore home three. Won't go down for Laughlin. But the contact inside. Check of the numbers. Jernigan, 16 points to this point, leads all scorers. Brooks with 14 on the other side. That foul went against Varner, and that is a third personal foul on Varner. It comes at the 532 mark of the third quarter. It'll be our timeout as well. Back with more coverage of state championship Saturday on the other side of the break. Now Walden to the line on the backside of what ended up being the media timeout. As she is at the Hardy's free throw line. Boy, Walden, a special player, huh? She finds her way to the charity stripe here. Coach for the Knights, Jeff Patterson, described to Maya Walden as the straw that stirs their drink. I love that analogy. I've never heard it before, but it's so true. Tamaya Walden has been a huge piece of this team. Either it's defense or on offense, her leadership has been key here today. She hasn't necessarily gotten the points that we normally see from Tamaya Walden, but she's been a facilitator. And sometimes in these state championship games, you have to be able to switch how you impact and help your team, and we've seen that from Walden this year. Is at the line on the other side, and just as quickly, we have a trip to the line on the other end of the floor. As Bishop McGinnis will see Chapel drop this in, Charlie Chapel. Yeah, one of those players when you talk about Walden that the points may not show up and be eye popping, but there's so many other things she does away from the scoring piece of it that make her so valuable when she's on the floor. Pesky defense and a tie-up. Possession arrow is going to keep it with the Knights. It seems like we've almost, uh, to some degree, hit the pause button a little bit here. You get the back-to-back -back fouls. You get the difficulty coming across the timeline. Now body to the deck, but Chapel back up quickly. But this is a moment where it seems the momentum piece of it, at least, is up for grabs, Anna. The momentum piece certainly is up for grabs. Neither one of these teams is really setting it. The game is slowed down. You can tell by the crowd. No one's really into it. The game is a little bit slower than we normally see. This is the night's opportunity to capture this game, get a few more points, 
get some momentum and continue to feed Mia Brooks, who's had an excellent game so far. Now there's work to do, and you can tell it by a glance over there to that bench and the coaching staff of the Knights. But this is the moment where you have to start clawing away. It's uh, certainly there for the taking. Talked about their four straight winning seasons and the competitive nature of, of this squad. I loved what he said about the freshmen. Coach Patterson in talking about this group. He said, you know, you want to know how locked in our kids have been about this whole state championship thing? He said, our freshmen have been scouting our opponents during the uh, postseason run. He said, when freshmen are the first ones in the film room wanting to take a look at who you're going to be seeing next, you know the entire group has come together and the chemistry is there. Of course, he also said they're not freshmen anymore. That's the case this time of year. Isn't it? When you have freshmen setting the tempo, watching film, helping this team excel, you can really expect this Knights team to be in this position this position again in the near future. I tell you what, they found it tough to find a way to slow so many of the different weapons for the villains. There was Charlie Chapel again. Brooks turned around, found the iron, and that's all. And trying to put that back up was Walden. Let's look at this again. This is the great ball movement and great movement from the attackers in Bishop. Watch this chapel. She just gets inside. She receives that ball well. And it's well played by Harriman just to find her underneath. You can tell this team has played together for a long time because the continuity and the flow of the ball once they have it in their hands is so good. All right, we got a little neck and neck between the twins on his roster right now. They both have four apiece, four points for Charlie Chapel. Four points for Tate Chapel, and you know it's something you're going to talk about for a lifetime, right? So a little internal competition taking place between the twins, but they have played so well together, and we should not let this game pass us by without mentioning what a special moment it is, not only to play for a state championship, but to play for a state championship alongside your twin sister. And Charlie Chapel has a slight lead right now, but they've certainly embraced the moment together. Charlie Chapel, she's the only one on the floor right now. Tate's yes. on the floor. She'll be here in a second. But they also have two rebounds. So they've done a really good job just being facilitators, being all over the floor. And what a cool opportunity to share with your family. Eric Gash was uh, with us in the earlier game. He talked a lot about winning. He, he won a state championship at the Dean Dome with his brother, Sam Gash. He talked about the family piece of it and how that was the most special piece of it. You have two sisters who have been together for a lifetime and they're together in the state championship environment once more. And uh, don't let it be lost on you that, yes, these basketball teams become a family, but when you've got flesh and blood out there with you, it makes it all the more special. This Speaking of uh, Chapel, here's one of uh, those key lookout front passes she makes, and it is our DPS fast break. Jernigan loves to go to that left hand, find that layup underneath, and her entire team knows it because we've seen it three to four times in transition. Just to go back to the Chapel Twins, since you mentioned it, yes. this is likely the last game that these two yes. players will play together. The Twins will play together because Charlie's headed to Davidson, and Tate is likely, or I'm sorry, Charlie's likely heading, heading to Davidson. Tate's heading to App State as a commit. So what a cool moment for these two sisters to be up by 25 points and continue to be on this floor together. Yeah, you think about a state championship moment, and again, something this crew experienced a year ago, but you think about the state championship moments that you get to be a part of and with your family, nothing quite like it, whether it's a you know, mother-daughter combination, coach-player, whether it's a father-son combination on some of these games, brothers, sisters in this case, it, uh, it just makes for something that you treasure for a lifetime and always a privilege to watch that unfold. What we are seeing unfold here is Bishop McGinnis remind everybody why they have been the standard in this classification for some time. Anna. 50 on the board already. Three and a half remaining in the third period. Bishop McGinnis in a groove. And the Knights looking for some type of response to claw back. Just have to chip away at this point if you're the Knights. That may help. A trip to the line coming for... Walden. So the Hardy's free throw line, the destination for Tamaya Walden. Hardy's, those world famous made from scratch biscuits, the Charlbrold 100% black Angus beef thick burgers. Feed your happy, that's Hardy's. Also, a reminder, we will have our play of the game coming up 
at the conclusion of this contest. Play of the game brought to you by Talk It Out North Carolina. Start the conversation. Reduce underage drinking. That's Talk It Out NC. We'll have the play of the game sponsored by Talk It Out NC. Nice job breaking the pressure. Then the three. There she is. Tate Chapel back in action. Great idea by the Knights to step up against Bishop. Try and slow them down quickly. But Bishop's ability, that great play just to break it up and then again kick it out to Chapel. What a great sequence by this Bishop team. Tate Chapel, somewhat on cue, says, remember me as she hit the West Shore home three. On the other end, time and again, Mia Brooks has answered. She has 16 as she knocks down this latest bucket. What a valiant effort for Brooks already in this game. Watch as the Knights continue to stay on their mark. You're seeing the Knights play a little bit more man-to-man because they had to switch it up defensively. Bishop was really breaking down their zone, so it looks a little bit better, but the Knights have to continue to move their feet. As soon as their mark is moving, they have to be on them as well to slow down these chances and not let them get a free shot. A little step back, and a West Shore home three is perhaps a bit of a heat check after the last one was knocked down by Tate Chapel and a foul called as the collision between Jernigan and Jones. That's going to be a foul called on Jernigan and just the first personal assessed her direction. Think about how hard she plays. Something that we're inside the final two minutes of the third quarter, and that's the first whistle that she's drawn from a personal foul standpoint. And speaking of personal fouls, there's another. That was a moment where Brooks just kind of got caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. Coach Patterson spoke about his team saying we have to stay out of foul trouble because we have so many freshmen and new players on the bench. We have to stay in situations and stay free from those fouls. So if you're the Knights, just play a little bit cleaner. Pay attention to those details and don't run into Bishop and draw that foul. Well, by running into Bishop McGinnis, that was a fourth foul that was picked up by Brooks there. So Brooks with four and Clark with four. Those are the two players that uh, have that designation on both sides of the floor right now and in both of them for the Knights. And a distance bucket as Jernigan continues to add to her personal total. Well up over 20 now. Jernigan leading the way. Brooks kicks that off to Jones. And looking way out front of everybody where Tate Chapel was located. Just taken away by Walden. Nicely handled when the numbers were against her. Walden really good on defense. She knows that Bishops likes that transition ball over the top. She's in the right place at the right time to help her team get back on offense. Well, wrong place, wrong time on that foul a moment ago. Right place, right time for both these rebounds for Brooks. But she just unable to get any of those efforts to fall. Thought a drive of the baseline was coming. Instead, it ends up there. Olivia Stone and the sophomore has a bucket in the state championship. Olivia Stone getting her name called as the total runs to 58. Well, a reminder, we will have our player of the game presented by myspot.nc.gov coming up at the conclusion of this contest. Might have an idea where things are trending in that direction. Jernigan brings it up the floor, tries to beat the horn but it is just off the left side of the window. 58-29, Bishop McGinnis using the last two quarters to begin to pull away as they try and close in on their latest North Carolina State Championship. Fourth quarter, and Bishop McGinnis having pushed well out front at 58-29 as we begin the final eight minutes of basketball in the Class 1A girls ranks. And this is the time where you're going to see a lot of those special championship moments. We talked about Stone coming in just a moment ago and getting a basket in the state championship environment. And you're going to see the emptying probably in many ways of the benches. 
Jenna Moore going to work her way onto the floor, one of the freshmen. For all the senior leaders for Bishop McGinnis and what this means to close their career out with the latest title, if they can make this stick across the final eight minutes. Got to be special for so many young players who are experiencing it for the first time. Great opportunity from for some younger players to get some minutes on the floor in a state championship game. The way that Brian Robinson coaches this team, you can expect this Bishop team to be back in this position again. So if you can get some of the younger players this experience, this opportunity, it'll certainly pay off in the future. You see Nevaeh Fears out there who was handling the ball just a moment ago. She's going to come over and try to help Tate Chapel, who goes to the floor. Nevaeh Fears in her junior campaign, but we mentioned Jenna Moore, the freshman. You saw the basket from Olivia Stone, the sophomore. Timeout called for from a possession-saving standpoint, but it gives us a chance to mention that this is, in fact, what you watch for, those lifetime moments down the stretch. Well, 58-29 is the advantage that Bishop McGinnis has built. You know, you were referencing when we were looking at some of the numbers during the break. Not only how well they have worked on design plays like the one that Kirsten Barner finishes off here, but also how well they have protected the basketball in this state championship environment. Bishop has only had one turnover in the second half, five total. They have been so key in locking into taking care of the ball and finishing their chances. You mentioned these design set plays, and that's the reason why they're able to take care of the ball is because they execute and they know exactly what they're doing and where they need to be to do it. Kirsten Varner on this trip down the floor lays another home, and she's going to the line for the and one after this. Varner so good from beyond the arc. She thinks she's going to set there, but watch as she beats two different defenders to find herself towards the bucket. The Knights just can't step hard enough. They have to stay out of the foul trouble situation, and Varner is so good and so physical underneath the hoop. Uh, this looks familiar. You think back to 70-42 over Birdie. Here they are at 63-29. The advantage they hold over the Knights just continue to capitalize on every chance provided. This is a team right at 50% from the field, 22 of 46 on the night. And those numbers just continuing to climb. And, you know, perhaps the, the most amazing statistic that you can throw out there Talk about all the basketball numbers. You figure all that out. But when you look at championships, how many times have you seen a team arrive in a state championship environment 11 times and be in a position to say, yep, we won all 11? That's where Bishop McGinnis is sitting right now. They close this out across the final 658. You're talking about 11 trips, 11 victories on the largest stage in North Carolina. You can see how Bishop prepares for these games. You can see how locked in these players are, their communication with one another, how well they execute the plays on offense, and how they listen to their coach and Brian Robinson and execute what he wants for them. Also, when you are in your 11th time being here, everyone who is on the roster has been in a state championship before, and they have the experience as seniors, the experience together. They want to win it one more time together before they go off to their respective colleges. So it just shows the paying attention to details pays off in the long run, and I think that's what Bishop separates themselves. And with. you're looking at the future right now. You know, you see Helen Thompson on the floor, a sophomore. Ashley Hawley on the floor, a sophomore. Speaking of Hawley, takes this away, looks well out front. There is Jenna Moore, stops, and is trying to put that up for a basket. It is not to be, but Claire Sullivan, another one, seeing some time. You saw her scrapping for the basketball a moment ago. So an entirely new group on the floor for Bishop McGinnis, but no reason to believe you won't see them more often as time progresses with the history of this program. If you're the Knights, too, and you see that Bishop has made a complete line change, you're playing against a different roster, you shouldn't drop your head. This Bishop team is excellent. They've always executed well. They've been here for the 11th time. This just shows how dominant Bishop is, and the Knights have to stay in this game. You want to finish out on top. You want to give it your best effort. We're going to see the Knights kind of figure that out against some players they maybe haven't scouted before. Well, and I'll go back to it. This is a young Knights team. You know, you talk about the senior Walden, yes. You talk about the seniors, Jones and Clark. Beyond that, you're talking freshmen, sophomores, juniors on this squad. So, yes, you can talk about getting valuable experience for future opportunities like this on the Bishop McGinnis side. And, of course, you're going to with 10 trips already prior to this. 
But you can also talk about so many of these Knights players who, yeah, the scoreboard may not end in your favor in this one, but you're going to get the experience necessary to come back here and compete for what would still be that first championship again. So these are valuable, valuable minutes for players on both sides. And, and talk about wholesale changes. We got an entirely new group of Knights to be greeted. As that young group goes off, and so many of those uh, key contributors back, and in addition to Isabella Ross, who we talked about putting together a nice day so far, Grace Harriman is back, and, you know, these fans know it. You hear their reaction every time there are those wholesale changes. They're tipping their cap to this tremendous group. The wholesale changes reminds me of the UNC soccer team. You'll see that in their substitutions. They'll switch out the entire lineup because they have the talent to do it. To go back to the Knights, one thing that Coach Patterson said about Walden is she's been the glue to our team. We'll go as far as she will take us. And they had her convinced at the beginning of the season she has to be a leader, she has to be vocal. But you get to a championship game and you're going to have to depend on some of the younger players, newer players on your roster. It can't just be one player to help you win a game. And valuable minutes that these younger players in the Knights are getting against Fish have been a really strong team. Charlie Chapel able to lay another one in. Chapel, she's trending toward double figures. Now has eight points alongside three rebounds, four steals, and maybe the impressive number, the six assists so far. Walden with another bucket. Kate Chapel on the other end. Couldn't get that to go. Latest shot off the window and a basket for Grace Harriman. First bucket of the state championship game for Harriman. Now one for three, and she's in the scorebook for the state title contest. Big time block. Isabella Ross chased down out front by Charlie Chapel, And right at the free throw line to her sister Tate Chapel, And now a jump ball. The tie-up. Going to keep it on this end. Take another look at just kind of vintage Bishop McGinnis. We mentioned the great ball movement from Bishop and how they are able to kick the ball out, kick the ball back inside, dribble when they need to, take their opportunities and their moments. It's great ball movement, and that's what's led to these 67 points. Well, if you're wondering how this fares with what Bishop McGinnis did down the stretch and in the postseason, 54-15 against Hazel. Quick turnaround for Tate Chapel. She'll go to the line. 54-14 North Stokes. 62-55 Bessemer City. 56-42 Cherokee. 41-30 Robbinsville. And then you've got this kind of production in the state championship game of 67-35 for the villains of Bishop McGinnis. And it, uh, it's going to be another one of those marquee finishes, it seems, for the Lady Villains. This goes down for Tate Chapel and a big hand as another of those seniors Grace Harriman comes off after getting the bucket a moment ago so the greeting not only everybody celebrating the basket she just scored but uh, some of these farewells now being said to some great players along the way. Coach Robinson spoke about how important Grace Harriman is to this team and he said last year she got a concussion so she wasn't able to play in the championship game and then before last season even started, her mom passed away. And back in July of 21, they, her and her mom came up with the new uniforms that we're seeing on Bishop right now. So it was a huge effort by this Bishop team to get back to the state championship so Grace could play in it and everything that she's been through. He also said it's cool that this team is wearing the jerseys, the uniforms that her mom and Grace helped design. So a really cool story to hear about Grace Harriman in her final year. Big time hand coming now as they call for Katie Deal, another of the seniors. Yeah, you heard the family, her family, embrace her. They do the same thing for Deal here. Well, a reminder, in just a bit, we are going to have the player of the game selection, the myspot.nc.gov player of the game coming up. You probably have an idea who it's going to be. We'll pass it along officially in just a bit. Four and change remaining. And after... Withstanding an early push from the Knights to hang right in this thing. Bishop McGinnis pulled away in the second period and has not looked back. Tate Chapel a little too strong. Yeah, this contest was 17-12 after the first period of action. 
but Bishop McGinnis outscoring Chatham Charter 21-10 in the second, 20-7 in the third, and they've built upon it since. Tate Chapel to the line one more time. Now you got eight different players that have scored in the contest for Bishop McGinnis and the entire roster having seen the floor, it seems, at one time or another. Coming off is Clark. And the Knights bringing Abby Clark in for Emerson Clark on this occasion. Boy, there's those special moments that you, you continue to talk about, you continue to address, and, and just what it means. And you, you see it on both sides. Standing by at the scorer's table as well. Looks like Helen Thompson is going to come on for Bishop McGinnis. Jason, we've been talking chance. about family and how important it there is, it is for players to play on the field. Abby Clark and Emerson Clark are cousins. They're not playing together right now. We might see them on the floor together, but what a cool opportunity for them as well. Well, maybe even better. She got to yeah. hand the towel off. One subbed in for the other. I'll that makes you. for an incredible moment. That Would was, you rather uh, be that subbed on nice. or play with? Well, how about both? It doesn't have to be one or the other. Yeah. Maybe we get to see them do both in a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. But it is a nice moment. You see one of those come on for the other, and it just reminds you of, again, the family atmosphere here. And you know who this hand is for? Speaking of the chapels, that's Tate Chapel going off. Big hug from her head coach. And what a luxury it is, Anna, for Bishop McGinnis to be in position to one by one sub out these upperclassmen and give them their own special moment. Not something that happens for you every day. Certainly not in a championship environment. But he has the ability now to structure this exactly how he wants, Coach Brian Robinson, because his team has been dominant once more in this one. To the line goes Lillian Jones. And knocks down the NC 529 free throw. Here comes the other of the Chapel twins, Charlie Chapel, receiving a nice round from the Villains faithful as well as a hug from her coaching staff and each of these seniors being honored in their own way. Really cool to see it in how Chapel stepping off, giving Coach Robertson a long hug. You could see what he means to her career so far and, and how he's been able to design this team and help this team win so many state championships and, and do it in such a professional manner. He has some really talented players on this roster and they've really developed well over their four years here at Bishop. And they're not going anywhere anytime soon, this Bishop McGinnis squad. They have been the villains to so many who tried to win state championships, living up to that name, and they should continue to be for a long, long time. But uh, rising above here on this Saturday, another toss in the direction of Levea Fears. Fears tried to go in, join the scoring group in this contest, not to be on this trip. Credit the Knights, tip your cap to the Knights, continuing to fight, continuing to battle. Still by Claire Sullivan. Three ball. <laughs> Helen Thompson, the sophomore, also now on the score sheet as she knocks down a West Shore home three. You could see the bitch explode as soon as Thompson hits that three. Jernigan stepping onto the court to give her a high five. It's a team effort, and that's what happens, too. You have a lot of talented, gifted players. You have some players that come off the bench, and you want one another cheering for one another. That's what makes a good team. Don't want a bunch of superstars. You want a little bit of everything so they can execute, they can be unselfish, and win and, and do what they need to do to get those wins. Inside the final two minutes now, what a season it has been. Chatham Charter, the Knights... Anytime you complete your season in the state championship game, even if it doesn't go your way, you've won a championship to get there. These are the champions out of the East here representing the East in this contest. And it does nothing but fuel the fire to get back here. You have to believe this young group is going to hit the gym next summer with a renewed passion to repeat this feat of making it to North Carolina basketball's largest stage at the high school level. You mentioned being in a state championship game. With this being the night's first state championship game, having so many young players who are getting this experience, getting out on the floor, the opportunity to play in it, it makes you think that 
Coach Patterson and his team will likely be here again, have another opportunity, and it only makes you better when you play against a team like Bishop, who's so difficult. You see what you need to do to win, and you can go to the drawing board and, and potentially make it happen next year. Let's go ahead and take a look at our play of the game brought to you by Talk It Out NC. You know who's going to be at the end of this, right? Jernigan is able to receive that great transition ball from Charlie Chapel, who's had six assists, cheater and assists, and it's that connection between Chapel and Jernigan on the other side of the floor. How well Jernigan is able to put it up in the Chapel to be able to facilitate those balls really well done and that's how they won the game the story of this game was those transition balls to turn again just to lay it up yeah, that's our talk it out nc play of the game start the conversation reduce underage drinking talk it out in c don't miss that olivia meza the freshman into the contest and she hits a free throw so now in the scorebook one of the freshmen on the night side of things involved as a number of those knights players get a chance to be in there. Kenzie Jordan, a freshman, taking a look at it there. This chase down by Sam Wilson, another freshman into the contest. That pass zipped across by Judy Sharif, who also, I'll say it one more time, is a freshman. So if you're wanting an indication that this team has a lot of young pieces and may be back in the near future, look at this group on the floor right now. Meza with the free throw, the surrounding cast all in their freshman or sophomore campaigns. By the way, Ella Engel, the sophomore, handling the ball right now. The only on the floor we didn't mention. Final minute as Bishop McGinnis closes in on a title. Well, that's well done. Sam Wilson, the freshman. She'll recount that moment when in her freshman campaign, she scored at Reynolds in the title game. But this title game belongs to Bishop McGinnis. They eclipsed 70, and they were a well-old machine tonight. Wilson's able to dribble inside, find an opportunity to beat Bishop's defense. And the Knights are they're finishing off strong. They're playing good defense against Bishop. They're staying locked in, and they're keeping their emotions in check. And that's what you see from this Knights team. It's a professional style, and well done, well coached by Coach Patterson. Well, you know what's coming now. And they know how to do it at Bishop McGinnis. And that is celebrate a state championship. Final seconds rolling off the game clock in Reynolds Coliseum. They repeat. And for the 11th time in as many tries, the villains of Bishop McGinnis will take the title home. They continue to reign supreme in North Carolina 1A women's basketball. And this was as impressive a state championship performance as you're going to see. A dominant performance by Bishop. A lot of scores on the field, rather on the court for this team. Jernigan leading the way with 21 points. We've seen a lot of younger players as well getting the opportunity to play in the state championship game. There's a ton of experience. It's their last time to play together. They knew that and they executed well to get this dominant win here tonight. Four and double figures. Jernigan leading the way with those 21 points. Add it all up, 73 on the board, an 11th title there. And going home with the villains of Bishop McGinnis. A 73-43 win for Bishop McGinnis, latest of the 11 titles for the villains. We're going to hand you over to public address, getting ready for all the accolades to be handed out and the latest title to be celebrated. Of course, tonight celebrating what's been a tremendous season. You'll listen in as they receive their medals, and all the superlatives will be handed out as we hand you over to the public address here at Reynolds. Number 14, Number 15, number 1. Number 20, Alice and Elmore. Number 22, Finji Jordan. Number 24, Ella Eden. Number 33, Judy Street. Number 34, Olivia Mesa. Number 41, Scott Flynn. And number 44,
The hardware being handed out as Bishop McGinnis celebrates his latest title. Dominant performance, 73-43. The final in this one, where the numbers just continue to impress when you look at the way they performed in this contest. And you see the individuals. Everybody able to hit the floor at one time or another for the villains in this one. And all celebrating a championship. As we get set to hand out our final superlatives in this contest. You look back and one player kind of stands above the fray, 21 points for Jernigan. It should come as no surprise, she was the outstanding player a year ago and, and back to likely put herself in the mix for that one more time. She was a big part of these overall numbers we look at, which is presented by the U.S. Army GoArmy.com. What are the final numbers that stick out in your mind, Anna? Adelie Jernigan with 21 points in this game. You look at the stats, 38 rebounds, 35 rebounds from Chad and Charter. That was huge, but 19 assists for Bishop. That just shows how well this team is at sharing the ball. They're so good and unselfish in a state championship game. A lot of kudos to Jernigan and how she led it. Really good overall performance by Bishop and some of these senior leaders. And speaking of that player of the game designation, guess where it's headed once again. Jernigan with those 21 points leading the way. She was, as I said, one of a handful of players that reached double figures, one of a handful of players that contributed in multiple ways. But she is our myspot.nc.gov player of the game. And for the second straight year, the superlative goes her direction in the state title game. There's no way. I mean, it shows why Jernigan has had six Power 5 school offers, including this school at NC State, Wake Forest, UVA. She is so dominant. She has the athleticism. She's so long to put those layups up so easily. And her transition game is strong playing with Charlie Chapel. So a great overall performance. And you, Jernigan would probably say she wouldn't win that MVP without some of the players on the team that helped facilitate those points. Well, a number of those players, you talk about the, the Chapel twins, 10 points and 8 points respectively. Varner with 12 points and 9 rebounds, just a rebound shy of a double-double for Varner. And Ross, who put together a quiet double-figure day with 11, just some of those individuals that stand out. And Well, it's... Uh, it's one they'll continue to talk about for a long, long time. And the most important thing for Bishop McGinnis, Anna, is they remain perfect. 11 for 11 here in the state capitol when it comes to title games. You mentioned Ross and how she's going to be a huge vital piece as this team moves forward. She was three of three from the three-point line. So, yes, 
undefeated, but they will likely continue this with some of the young players that they have on their roster. A dominant performance against this Knights team here tonight. Now here comes the celebration as the entire team will receive the banner that solidifies their spot as the reigning and continuing to reign champion of 1A women's basketball in North Carolina. You reflect back upon this championship moment and this championship team and the juggernaut they have become, the absolute power they've become in North Carolina. What are your takeaways from the 1A title game? Your final thoughts? Bishop did a really good job playing a collective game together. They had a thorough game plan, and they took care of the ball with only nine turnovers. Chatham Charter had a hard team to play against. In the beginning of the game, they did a really good job sticking around, but it was the way that Bishop played as a whole, had some really dominant seniors who played a lot of minutes together, so they're so good at linking up and playing together, finishing their opportunities that led for a great Bishop uh, dominant performance. Well, we came in talking about Bishop McGinnis as the standard in 1A women's basketball. They remain as such a dominant performance and a victory. We remind you, you got Central Cabarrus coming up against Northwood after a brief pause, latest to hoist the trophy. Newest champions and still champions, the villains of Bishop McGinnis. It was never plan B, just a